We're going to begin now the teaching of the love letter left to the bride of Christ, given by Jesus Christ to the Holy Spirit and given to Paul. And we're, we're going we're gonna to show this to you, that it truly is a love letter left behind for all of us, the bride of Christ. So let's begin. It says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Did everybody catch what he said? First of all, let's go into what Timotheus is. What does Timotheus say? The definition. He's the one that's dear to God. And when we dig a little deeper, what else is it saying? He is the supreme divinity, an affinity, a deity, God. Timotheus, the supreme divinity. It seems like this is a hidden message to us that this represents the Holy Spirit talking through Timotheus to the bride of Christ, the one that is dear to God. Now watch what he says. Unto the church of Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Where did we say the other churches were? Do you remember what we said? Where are they? They're in Asia. These other seven churches are in Asia. Where is this church? In God. These churches of Thessalonia are in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand very subtly what he's saying to us. These are not the churches the seven churches we just reviewed, these churches he's referring to of Thessalonia are in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not in Asia. Where are they? Where are these churches he's referring to? Mes and we're going we're gonna to show it in the scripture. It's in Macedonia and Achaia. The other seven churches are right here. These are the seven churches in Asia, as we just showed you in Revelations. These churches in Thessalonica, right here, Thessalonica, he's referring to the churches of Macedonia and Achaia. Why? Because these two churches came out of the seven churches. Remember when we were showing you in Revelations, where he was giving great warning to them to come out of the churches? And he's saying he has something against them. I have somewhat against thee. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. He's telling him to leave the churches. And what did Jesus say in Mark? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of their teachings. He's telling them to come out. And what do we have going on? Macedonia and Achaia are the two churches of Thessalonica that came out of the seven churches. They heeded the word of the Lord. They heeded the word of the spirit, the angel over the churches, and they came out of the seven churches. And now they have their own two churches in Thessalonica, which is in Macedonia and Achaia. And that's exactly what we find when we go to first Thessalonians. Let's go over it one more time. And the church of Thessalonians, see, this is in Thessalonica. And these churches are what? They're not in Asia. It's clear on the map. They're not in Asia. Where are they? He tells us they're in God the Father, and they are in the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the churches that came out of the church because they heeded the warning of the angel of the Lord. They heeded the warning of the angels, the spirit over the churches. And now as I build on this, I'm going to show you that this is, in fact, a love letter written to the bride of Christ. Let's, let's go on a little bit. What is he saying? So the spirit, right? We talked about Timotheus, the one that's dear to God, the one that is the supreme divinity. What is he saying? He's speaking now. We give thanks to God always for you, for you. 
The supreme divinity is giving thanks to God for you. All making mention of you in our prayers. Imagine that. The Holy Spirit is giving thanks for you. He's giving, making mention of you in his prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the sight of God, our Father. The Holy Spirit is remembering without ceasing your work of faith. What are we all doing, brothers and sisters? Aren't we all diligently seeking our Lord? Aren't we all edifying one another? Aren't we all encouraging one another? Aren't we all out there teaching and preaching the gospel and the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Aren't these the works that we're doing? Aren't these the fruits that we're bearing? We're out there teaching and preaching unceasingly. These are our work of faith. And now Timotheus, the supreme divinity, he's remembering us without ceasing. He's giving thanks to God for you, for us, for our labor of love and our patience of hope. And what does he say in 1-4? Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. We chose God. We're choosing to be with God. We're choosing to be one with God. For our gospel came not unto you in the word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. You see what he's saying? That the gospel didn't come to us just by reading the word. It came to us by the power in the Holy Ghost. He's talking to the bride. And as we go on, you're going to see that. So let's do this. Let's do this. I would like everyone right now to start here at this point, right where I'm pointing to, and read your name out. For example, I'll say, Dear Charles, we give thanks to God always for you and all making mention of you. It's a love letter. It could say, dear Aaron. It could say, dear Oscar. It could say, dear Anna. Dear Anna, we give thanks to God always for you and all making mention of you in our prayers. I want all of you to read this as a letter to the bride and place your name right here. Dear Anna, we give thanks to God always for you and for making mention of you and for your work of faith and for your labor of love and your election of God. For the gospel didn't come unto you by word only, but also in the power in the Holy Ghost. This, my brothers and sisters, is a love letter to the bride for encouragement, to edify us, to strengthen us in these last days. And let's go on and read the rest of this. What else does he say to us? In 1.6, and ye became followers of us. Aren't we following the Holy Ghost? Aren't we following our Lord and Savior? Having received the word in as much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, Aren't we all going through some kind of affliction, whether it's personal in our family life or between our friends or at work? We're all going through certain trials and tribulations in our lives, but we do it with great joy in the Holy Ghost. And what does he say? So that you are examples to all believe, here it is, in Macedonia and Achaia. Remember, he's no longer addressing the seven churches in Asia, like we see in the book of Revelations. Who is he addressing? He's addressing the two churches in Macedonia and Achaia that came out of the seven churches because they had eyes to see. They had ears to see. I'm sorry, they had ears to hear. They heard the message of the Lord. They heard the message of the angels over the churches, and they came out of the seven churches. In Thessalonica, and they have their own two churches in Macedonia and Achaia because they heard the Lord's words and they came out. Because now they are examples 
to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Aren't we supposed to be the bride of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit? We are to be the living examples on this earth for all to see, for all that have ears to hear us. As Aaron, our brother, proclaimed, we are the watchmen. We are keeping watch at the Lord's doors. We are waiting earnestly and anxiously for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us home, to escape us out of here so that we can escape all things about to befall upon the earth. Because we are the examples that believe in the two churches that came out of the church because we heard his word. He is our Lord and Savior. He is our shepherd. He is our great shepherd. And we, his sheep, we hear his voice and we follow only him. And we came out of the other seven churches. This, brothers and sisters, is the bride of Christ being the example. We are the example to the whole world. And you want to see it says that we are the watchmen right here in the next verse. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. From you, the bride of Christ, sound it out. Isn't that what Aaron taught us? We're to sound out. We're to keep watch. We're to proclaim the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're sounding out where? The word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, not only in the church of the bride of Christ, but into every place your faith of God word is spread abroad. That's the job of a watchman, to sound it out, to sound the alarm. We've come out of the church. We've overcome. It is our duty as watchmen, as the bride of Christ, to sound out to the whole world that our Lord and Savior is at the door. That our great shepherd is about to call us home. Amen. And what does he say? For they themselves show us what manner of entering we had unto you. And how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Look what he's saying. For we have shown people how the Holy Spirit has entered into us and changed us to only serve the living true God. Because we are the living examples like he tells us. We have to be that light. We have to be the true example to the whole world. That we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we only serve the true living God. And for what else? And to wait for his son from heaven who was raised from the dead, even Jesus, which was delivered us from the wrath, who has delivered us from the wrath to come. To wait for his son. Isn't that what we're doing? We're being the living examples that we are filled with the Holy Spirit to serve the living, the true God and to wait for his son from heaven. Isn't that what the bride is doing? We are waiting earnestly. We are waiting vigorously. We are waiting for our, our blessed hope, Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. To what? To deliver us from the wrath to come. Brothers and sisters, there is no doubt that 1 Thessalonians is a letter to the bride of Christ. What else does he say? Watch this. For you yourselves, brethren, know our entrance unto you as it was not in vain. He's talking about how the Holy Spirit came unto us. All of us have a story. We all can say a story of how, and we remember when the Holy Spirit came into our life and our life changed and our eyes are opened. Remember what it said in Revelations? He that have an ear, let him hear. That's us. 
That's why we are gathered together as the bride of Christ, because we did hear his voice. He pulled us out of the church. He woke us up. This is what makes us the bride of Christ. This is what makes us as examples of the church of Macedonia and Achaia. We've come out of the seven churches because our eyes are open and our ears can hear his voice. And he pulled us out of the churches and he woke us up. And we all have a story of how we were woken up. And it says in 2.4, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as of pleasing men, but God which trieth the hearts. The Holy Spirit is teaching us the gospel. That's what he's saying. That's why we're all gathered here together today to learn the gospel, to learn what the Holy Spirit has to teach us, to keep our ears open so we could hear the Spirit talk to us on a daily basis. What did Aaron teach us? To pray and watch always, as it says in Luke 21, 36. Keep in prayer always. And then, my brothers and sisters, you will hear the Holy Spirit speak the gospel unto your heart, unto your soul, unto your mind. You will hear him speak to you. And what does he say? Nor of men sought we glory. The Holy Spirit doesn't seek the glory of men. Neither of you. He doesn't seek our glory. But what does the Holy Spirit say? But we are gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. And what does he say? I love this next verse. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also of our own souls, because ye dear, you were dear unto us. The Holy Spirit is affectionately desirous of us, of you. Do you know how powerful this is? To teach us because he desires us and giving us their soul because we are dear unto them. We are dear unto the Holy Spirit. And what does he say? Ye are witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we have ourselves among you that believe. We are his witnesses. Aren't we the bride of Christ witnessing right now? The imminent coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is coming for his bride shortly. That day, that time, that hour is upon us, brothers and sisters. He is coming shortly. And we are going to be the living witnesses. And when we, the bride of Christ, vanish off the face of this earth, we will be the witnesses unto the whole earth. When everyone sees us vanish off of this face of this earth, we will give testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the true Messiah. He is the one and only living Son of God. He is the Christ of God. The whole world will be in shock, in awe, when this bride of Christ, when we all vanish off the face of this earth. We are and will be the witnesses to that. What else did he say? That ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you, even unto his kingdom. Who's called us? The Lord God has called us because you walk worthy of God, who's called us, and unto his kingdom and glory. Do you want to see where Jesus Christ says this to us? Where he's called us, where he's chosen us? Watch this. What does Jesus say? Ye have not chosen ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. He says it clearly. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. 
Isn't that what he says? In 1 Thessalonians 2.12, that you would walk worthy in God, who hath called you. The Lord God has called us. He has chosen us. He has ordained us, as it says in John 15.16. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. The Holy Spirit is thanking God without ceasing. Without ceasing. He's thanking God for us because when you have received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not of the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The Holy Spirit is thanking God without ceasing. Because we received the word of God, not just because it was the word of men that gave it to us, but because it's the truth of the word of God, which is effectually working in you because you believe we are the examples. We have to be the light. We have to lead the way, brothers and sisters. We have to be the watchmen during these times. For ye, brethren, became the followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. What does he say? For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea and are in Christ Jesus. Remember what it said at the beginning? The Holy Spirit, the, 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 the divinity, the one dear to God, the supreme divinity through the church of Thessalonians, the churches that are in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, the ones that are in Macedonia and Achaia, he's making it clear. We, the bride, came out of the seven churches. That's what he's saying here. That is what he's saying. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, which are in Christ. These aren't the seven churches. We came out of them because we believe. Because of our belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he has spoken in our ears through the, through the will and the power of the Holy Spirit to pull us out of the churches and to wake us up. So that we can become the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, which shall escape all these things about to befall upon the earth. Let's go on. And it says, but we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in the presence, not in heart, endeavored, the more abundantly we see your face with great desire. They abundantly want to see our faces with great desire. Can you imagine that? In heaven, the apostles, the disciples, the Holy Spirit, they desire to see us. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Are you seeing that? Sometimes Satan does come into our lives in different ways and different methods. That we have to be aware, we have to keep watch, not to allow that to come into our lives. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? The Holy Spirit's asking, what's his joy? What's his crown of rejoicing? And what does he say? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. I want this to impact all of you. The Holy Spirit is saying that we are his glory. We are his joy. He's telling us the bride of Christ. Because we are going to be where? In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. We are going to be the glory and the joy of him. Because we've waken up, we've come out of the churches. 
We are sounding the alarm to all the world as the bride of Christ. And he's telling us we are his glory. We are his joy. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And, and, and who does he send? Who does the Lord send? And sent Timotheus, the supreme divinity. It says right here. And sent Timotheus, the supreme divinity, our brother and minister of God. Isn't the Holy Spirit the minister of God, the supreme divinity, the fellow bearer in the gospel of Christ to do what? To establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. Isn't that why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ left the Holy Spirit with us and upon us so that he could be our comforter, so he can establish us, so he could be the fellow bearer in the gospel of Christ. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing for us and with us and through us. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. That we are appointed thereunto. The Holy Spirit is telling us he's been appointed unto us. For these times, for our days, for our lives, for this moment in time that we are in now. Because we have the ears to hear. We heard his voice and he pulled us out of the churches. And what is he saying? And for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Your faith is being tested. He wants to know what is our faith in these days. And what does Timotheus say? He's now giving a report unto the Lord. What does Timotheus say? What does the supreme divinity say about us? But now when Timotheus came from you unto us, Timotheus came from you. He's now giving a report in heaven to the disciples, to the apostles, to our Lord Jesus Christ, to God. And what does he say? And brought good tidings of your faith and charity, and ye have good remembrance of us always. Look what he's saying about us. Look what he's saying about the bride of Christ. They brought back good tidings of us because of our faith, because of our charity, because we also have good remembrance of the Holy Spirit. We have good remembrance of the apostles. We have good remembrance of the disciples because we desire greatly to see them. That's what he's saying. And isn't that what we're doing, brothers and sisters? Don't we greatly desire to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to see God the Father, to see our brothers and sisters, the apostles and the, and the disciples in heaven? We desire to see them. And what else does Timotheus, the supreme divinity, say? Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all of our affliction and distress by your faith. The Holy Spirit was comforted by us because of our faith for standing strong in these end times, for standing firm in these last days. When all this turmoil is in the world and, and everything's coming against us, we are standing strong in our faith. And that's what brings us together here, brothers and sisters. We are preaching and teaching the word of God. The good news is being proclaimed throughout the earth because we are standing strong in our faith. And he says that, for now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. And yes, that is what we're doing. We are standing fast in the Lord. We are immovable. Our faith keeps us strong and firm in our belief and our convictions. Watch what he says next. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. He's saying, what else, what other joy can we have and, and show God for you? He's joyous in front of the Lord for you, for us, the bride of Christ. Imagine that your faith is so strong that the Holy Spirit doesn't know what else to do in front of God to show God how much he's thankful for you. 
before the Lord. Look what else he says. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. The Holy Spirit is praying exceedingly night and day to see our face, to see the face of the bride of Christ. This is amazing. Our faith, the bride of Christ, our faith is so strong that they're praying exceedingly to see us. Watch this. And God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Are you seeing that, brothers and sisters? God himself, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ is directing Timotheus, the supreme divinity. The Holy Ghost is being directed on his way to us, to be with us. And for what? And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all, even as we do toward you. He's sending the Holy Ghost to us to increase us, to increase our faith, to increase our spirit, to increase our courage, to increase our love one to another. This is powerful, brothers and sisters. And what else? And to the end, he may establish your hearts to be unblameable in the holiness before the Lord God. Even, at, even to our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his saints. Do you see that? He's going to establish us, and he is establishing us, and establishing our hearts to be unblameable in the presence of God, and in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, at his coming with all his saints. This is an end times verse. He's clearly telling us that Timotheus, the Holy Ghost, the Supreme Being, has been sent here to establish us, to increase us, to give us faith and courage and love before God and before the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is clearly an end times letter being written to all of us, the bride of Christ. And what else does he say to us? We beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as you have received us, how ought you to walk and to please God? You would abound more and more. Listen to the power of that. He's exhorting us by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's proclaiming us before the Lord Jesus Christ. For we receive the word and he wants us to walk and to please God and abound more and more. This is the job of the Holy Ghost. This is the job of the Holy Spirit. He's working upon the bride of Christ. He is making us ready to enter into our Lord's kingdom. He is readying the bride now at this hour and this time. We all see the sword coming. We all see what's happening around the world. And he says, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. We as the bride hear the voice of our Lord. We the bride hear the voice of the Holy Spirit guiding us on a daily basis. And let no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Do not defraud anyone in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such things, as we also have forewarned you and testified. What else does Timotheus tell us, the supreme divinity? For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. He's telling us, we've come out of the churches, we're in Macedonia and Achaia. 
And he wants us to increase more and more because we've come out of the churches. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without and them that have lack of nothing. This is what the Holy Spirit is leading us to. And now he's talking about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are asleep, that you may sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. What does he tell us? For if we believe in Jesus that died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Why does he say that? Why is he saying those that are asleep in Christ, God will bring with him? Because as we know, the dead in Christ rise first. And after the dead in Christ rise first, he comes for his bride. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which we are alive and remain unto the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. Why does he say which we are alive and remain? This is not the left behind. Some people have misinterpreted this. This is not the left behind. What he's saying is the dead in Christ rise first. We're still here. We've remained because the dead in Christ are rising first. And then we that are, have remained here after the dead have risen first, we will not prevent them to go before us. The ones that are dead in Christ, they rise first. And then the bride of Christ is taken to heaven. I expect it'll be a simultaneous event. First, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then immediately, the Lord takes his bride out of here. And we vanish off the face of this earth, which we call the escape. Some of you refer to it as the rapture. And here's where it says it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see? The dead in Christ rise first. And then what? Here it is. Then, which we are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so that we shall be forevermore with the Lord. You see, people have misunderstood this remains. This is not those who are left behind and remain. He's talking about we remain because the dead in Christ rise first. So they rise first. We've remained here for a short time, which is probably a few seconds. And then what happens? We're caught up together with them. You see, that's why I think it's instantaneously. Because here in 416, he says, they shall ascend to heaven. I'm sorry. Sorry. He says, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we that remain shall be caught up together with them. The them he's talking about is the dead in Christ that rose first. And then we're caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So that we shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. He's telling us. He's laying out the order for us in which it will happen. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then instantaneously, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to be forever with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this is a roadmap. This is a love letter that has been left for us, the bride of Christ. And what does he say? For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It comes as a thief in the night for who? For those who aren't watching. If you're not watching, it's going to come to you as a thief in the night. And we're going to show that to you. Watch these next few verses. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Who's the them? Sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Who is he talking about? Sudden destruction shall come upon them, and they shall not escape. They. He's not talking about the bride of Christ. Let me show you. 
Remember Luke 21? What does he say in Luke 21? 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. If you're always watching, you're going to know the day and time and the hour. That's why he's telling us to watch ye therefore. To escape all these things. This is why in this ministry we call it the escape. For all you brothers and sisters who wonder why we've been calling it the escape and not the rapture, it's because of this verse. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling us to keep watch and pray always that we are counted worthy to escape all these things about the befall upon the earth so that we can stand before the Son of Man. We are not the they they are talking about in this verse. Sudden destruction comes upon them. Upon who? Those that aren't watching. And they shall not escape. And that's why he says, the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. It's, he's a thief in the night for those that aren't watching. Destruction shall come upon them because they didn't know their time of visitation. They didn't know the day or the time of the hour. They weren't keeping watch. And they shall not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are awake. You are in the light. You see that day approaching. Because he says so here. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, and that day shall overtake you as a thief. You are not in darkness, and that day should overtake you as a thief. It's not going to happen to you. Why? Because you are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Do you see, brothers and sisters? This is why I've been pointing out Luke 21, 36. Because it says, if you watch and pray always to be accounted worthy to escape all these things, this is the wrath for those who don't watch because they are in darkness. They shall not escape. And the coming of the Lord shall be destruction upon them as a thief in the night. Because Timotheus, the supreme divinity, is telling us, we, the bride of Christ, this letter is for you, the bride of Christ, telling you, you are not of darkness. That day shall not overtake you as a thief in the night. You are all the children of light and the children of day. This will not overtake us because we are the watchmen. We are the bride. We're watching. And he says so here. Therefore, let us not sleep as others, but let us watch. Do you see that? Let us watch. He's saying, don't be asleep as others. Don't let that day come upon you as a thief in the night. Don't let that destruction come upon you unawares. Because those who don't watch shall have destruction come upon them suddenly. And they shall not escape. And the Lord will come upon them as a thief in the night. And once again, he tells us, Timotheus, the supreme divinity, the Holy Spirit, Tells us, don't be asleep as others do, but let us watch. We are the watchful bride because we came out of the church. We heard the voice of our Lord and Savior. We heard the voice of the Holy Spirit pull us out of the seven churches of Asia. He's referring to the churches of Macedonia and Achaia, which we are the examples of the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. We heard our Savior's voice. We heard the teachings and the voice of the Holy Spirit pull us out of the church. And he's telling us, like Jesus Christ told us in Luke 21, 36, to watch and pray always. And now the Holy Spirit is telling us right here, let us watch and be sober. And he gives us more instruction. But let us, who are of the day, the children of the day, the children of the light. He just told us in this prior verse, the children of the light, the children of the day. Let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Isn't this what our brother Aaron was talking about earlier? The breastplate of faith and love. And an helmet, the hope of salvation, even the Holy Spirit directs us to do so. 
This is the command to the bride of Christ. He's telling us in this love letter to us. Because we are of the day, we are not of the night. For God hath not appointed us to the wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see? The children of the day, the ones that are keeping watch, the ones that are sober, we are not appointed to the wrath. We are appointed to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And this, brothers and sisters, is in the love letter directed to us, the bride of Christ. We are not appointed to wrath, he's telling us. Let this inspire you. Let this give you great hope in this day and time, in this hour that we are in now, where the whole world is crumbling and the beast system is rising. Let this love letter to you give you great hope and joy in your heart. that we are appointed to salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Strengthen one another, encourage one another. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men, rejoice evermore, Pray without ceasing. Remember we read earlier? Timotheus, the supreme divinity, is praying to the Lord without ceasing for us. He's joyous. We are his crown. We, are, we represent the joy he's telling us. We are his joy and his crowning because of our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's telling us to pray without ceasing, to pray always, and to watch to keep watch because we are not of the darkness. We are of the light. And now he's telling us to pray here always quench, not the spirit despise, not the prophesyings prove all things, hold fast to that, which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very peace of God Sanctify you holy. The very God of peace to sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and your soul and your body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it is a battle we're in. It's the battle of the spirits. It's a battle for your soul. It's a battle for your body. In this day and time, in this hour, brothers and sisters. As we see the evil marching on the earth, know that Timotheus, the Holy Spirit, the Supreme Divinity, is praying for us. And we shall pray for one another and to watch over one another. He's praying that our whole spirit, our soul, our body, and our mind be preserved to be blameless before the coming of our Lord Jesus what does he say? Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Isn't this what we read in John 15, 16? That he chose us, he ordained us. For he calleth you, and he will do it, because he is faithful that called us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto the holy brethren. And that's what I'm doing now. All of you, all of us. We are the holy bride of Christ. We are the ones that have been chosen by Christ. He chose us, as he says in John 15, 16. He's ordained us. And we are now reading this epistle to the holy brethren. All of us, each and every one of you, together as the bride of Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Remember, brothers and sisters, we have been chosen by the Lord for this moment in time to be the examples unto the whole world, to be the shining light, to make way for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This love letter 
which is in First Thessalonians, was written to you, the holy bride of the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, that is to be read unto the brethren everywhere. Show everybody this letter. Read it to them. Show them that they are the chosen bride of Christ and that this letter has been written to them personally. It is your personal love letter to each and every one of you in the bride of Christ, given to us by the Holy Spirit, given to all of us who are earnestly and joyfully waiting for the hope and coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who brings his great reward with him. Be of great cheer. Be of great courage that this letter was written unto you. Let it give you peace and great courage during these days which we are witnessing upon the earth. Go in peace. Love one another. Edify one another. And spread his holy gospel unto all the earth. 